There are a substantial number of chemicals that go by the broad term of insecticide. So how do these chemicals work and how are they able to target particular insects to kill the supposed bad ones and leave what we regard as good ones alive? Actually, do they do that? Well, insects have three distinct parts of their life cycle where they're actually vulnerable to different chemicals as eggs, larvae, and as a full-grown adult. Now, some of these chemicals work by attacking the nervous system of the insect. Some stop the insect from growing and developing normally, and some stop the insect actually feeding normally. By attacking these key areas and stages, the threat that particular insects pose to crops or in spreading diseases can be radically reduced. Next issue is how do you get the insect decide to actually attack the insect? method of attack is normally broken down into two distinct groups, contact insecticides and systemic insecticides. Contact insecticides work much as the way the name says, coming into contact with the outer surface of the insect and then affect the insect as a whole. A couple of major issues here, first being that insects are actually fairly good at hiding, often laying their eggs on the undersides of leaves generally try to keep out of the way of predators. It means that spraying the tops of plants often won't kill the insect. This is often why contact insecticides are sprayed from the side and involve creating a mist or an aerosol of insecticide around the plants. This then can cause the person spraying the crops or other people nearby to become contaminated with the spray. Second problem is that contact insecticides tend to attack all the insects in the area. This can mean that insect pollinators and those insects preying upon the damaging insects can be killed along with the target creatures. It can have serious consequences for the environment as well as for other harvests. Alternative to contact insecticides are the systemic insecticides. Here, the insecticide is actually taken up or even created by the plant. When an insect eats the plant, it also ingests the systemic insecticide. The more it eats, when insecticide it consumes, more likely it is to die. The advantage here is that only insects that are directly harmed by insecticide are those who are eating the particular crops, meaning that pollinating insects are generally left unharmed. There are, however, some issues with this type of insecticide. Firstly, the insect has to actually eat some of the crop before it's killed, so there may be substantial damage to the crops before all the insects are killed. Then again, Anything eating dead or dying insect will also be consuming the insecticide. It's possible if they eat a substantial number of insects, they in turn have a very high level of insecticide inside them. It can result in those insects which hunt the harmful insects could themselves be wiped out, leaving crops with no natural protectors in the future. Another issue is that in order the crops be totally safe for humans and even other farm animals to consume, there should be a period of time between the use of the insecticide any harvesting of the crop. This course means that there's a substantial period of time when the crops are actually unprotected from insect attack. Use of insecticides of all kinds can have substantial impact on other animals like birds who feed on the insects. With few insects about in the general environment, they can then support smaller numbers of birds and other animals higher up the food chain in the ecosystem, sometimes lead to unexpected and unintended consequences for the environment.